Hi guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. All boa constrictors squeeze, hence the name constrictor. But are some types more squeezy than others? And if so, what types are? And are there types of boas which tend to be a little more relaxed and laid back and less squeezy when you take them out to handle? Well, that's the question I'm going to explore today. If you're new to the channel, this is the place for information about all aspects of keeping and breeding boa constrictors in captivity. So if you like what you see, please be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my upcoming boa videos. So first off, I wanted to remind you guys that every boa is an individual. And just because you have a boa of a type that has a reputation for being more or less squeezy, doesn't mean that your boa is gonna be that way. These are just some general trends that I'm going to discuss based on my observations and handling of numerous types of boas over the years. The other thing I wanted to mention is that boas might behave differently at different stages of their life. In general, younger animals tend to be a little less uh, relaxed and maybe a little more squeezy. And then as they age, sometimes they will lose some muscle tone and become a little less squeezy. So you have to take that into account as well. And so the number one type of squeezy boa that I'm going to discuss first, and this is probably no surprise to most of you guys, is the true red tail boa, boa constrictor, constrictor. And these animals, not surprisingly, tend to be among the most squeezy of the boa constrictors. And it's not surprising given their huge muscles and their very square bodies. You can see how muscular this animal is. This is a Suriname female. Um, this female is around, she's about six and a half years old now. And you can see she's not very big. This is a smaller Suriname. They don't all get to be giants. And this animal wasn't stunted. She was fed the same uh, feeding regimen as my other boas. She just, you know, isn't really that big of a Suriname. But she's extremely squeezy, even by standards of two red tails. You can see she just, she has to have like several points of contact at all times for her to feel comfortable. You can see she's kind of wrapping with her tail and you know, with this part of her body as well. Um, some animals, they're just a little less confident, I think, and they just really need to hold on. And I've noticed that um, Surinams tend to be one of the squeezier types of true red tails, although they're not all squeezy. This is just a very squeezy example. I have some other examples of Surinams that like to hold on, but they're not gonna really constrict the hell out of your hand. Um, so I have to be careful when holding these Suriname sometimes because they like to wrap around my hand and I have a ring on they'll just squeeze and they'll basically squeeze my fingers until the ring jams against my knuckles and it can be quite painful. Um, so that's you know something to consider with true red tail boas. They definitely tend to be more squeezy, less comfortable to be handled. You know you can handle them you know and again there are examples that are less squeezy. But in general, the true red tails tend to be the most squeezy types of ball constrictors that people have as pets. Here's another really squeezy true red tail. This is a Pacalpa Peruvian boa. This guy is about uh, five and a half years old. You know, it's not surprising, as I mentioned, these guys are squeezy. They're just pure muscle. They're very muscular animals. Um, I think most people that get these animals appreciate that and they want an animal that's gonna give the impression of strength and power. So I think the squeeziness for them is probably not a drawback. You know, it's something that they like and, you know, they want to feel the power of their animal. You can see he's already wrapping around my uh, arm pretty, pretty uh, uh, strongly. But, you know, this isn't an animal that you probably want to take out and give to your, you know, eight-year-old nephew who's never held a snake before, you know, or bring to your local... Um, you know, Cub Scout group, you know, for the kids to handle. It, they're just in general going to be a little less relaxed than some of the other types of boas and having these big muscles, they're going to show you their power. Um, again, not necessarily a negative thing for a lot of keepers, but something to consider if you want a real chill laid back boa that you can just take out and, you know, sit in your lap and watch TV and just kind of enjoy as kind of a couch potato type of snake. 
There is one type of true red tail that tends to be a little less squeezy, maybe a little more chill to handle, and that's the Venezuelan true red tail like this one. And these animals have a lot going for them. They're really beautiful to look at. They don't get quite as big as some of the other true red tails. Typically they'll get to be around, you know, five to six feet or so. Um, and like, as I said, they're a little more chill than the Peruvians and the Surinams. Um, although they are still a true red tail. They're very muscular still. You can see she's still holding on pretty tightly. Just not quite as tight to cut off the circulation in my fingers like some of my other true red tails. Um, the, the downside with these guys is they're really hard to find. There's not too many people working with these Venezuelan true red tails. And so there's not a litter that's born every year, you know, that's going to be available. So you really have to know the breeders and, you know, follow the breeders who are working with these animals. And as soon as they're available, snatch one because they sell out fast. Um, but, you know, definitely worth looking into if you want to get a really cool true red tail that's not going to be quite as squeezy as some of the other true red tails. Now I want to show you guys a couple non-red tail boas, which also tend to be quite squeezy. And the first of these is the crawl key boa. And so this is a dwarf boa from a small island off the coast of Belize. Um, these are actually one of my favorite boas. I just think they have a lot of good qualities going for them. And when you're talking about a four foot uh, full grown animal that's squeezy, it's a little easier to handle than say, you know, an eight or nine foot true red tail. Um, so this guy this is a full grown male. He's around four feet long. And um, it's not entirely clear to me why these animals are more squeezy, but I think it might have something to do with their natural history because they live on these islands that have these like mangrove swampy areas and they're highly arboreal. And typically they'll cling to, to trees and branches and to the, you know, the mangroves. Um, so they have to hold on tight because they don't want to be washed away by the, the incoming surf. In addition, the, these islands are very limited as far as the food, and there are seasonal migrations of birds that come in for a few months out of the year. And that's when these boas get a lot of their calories, if not the majority of their calories in the wild. So obviously it's advantageous for them to be able to grab onto these birds and squeeze them very uh, efficiently so that they can eat. Here's another non-red tail boa. It's also very squeezy and these are similar to the crawl key boas. This is a cocker key boa. This is it's a similar dwarf boa from another island off the coast of Belize and you can see superficially they're pretty similar looking to the crawl key boas. So it's not surprising that they've evolved a lot of the same habits. Um, and again they just tend to be a little squeezier maybe because of their arboreal uh, habits in the wild and their diet of birds. Um, you know, one thing I wanted to mention when working with the squeezy boa, you can see how this guy is really holding onto my arm there. It's really more effective to unwrap from the tail. Okay, you just unwrap from the tail like this and the boa lets go pretty easily. If I had tried to unwrap from the head, this boa would have just squeezed harder, you know, more tightly with the tail. So always unwrap from the tail uh, if you're trying to unwrap your boa. In addition, another thing to keep in mind is for squeezy bows like this, it's really good to have um, furniture in the cage, which makes them feel more comfortable. You want to have driftwood and cork bark and things like that, really rough surfaces that they can grab onto. And when you're putting the boa back in the cage, it really helps to allow it to wrap around those items in the cage just to make it feel safer because if you put the ball just right in the cage and it doesn't have anything to wrap onto it's going to kind of freak out and maybe you know do a little spasm and maybe knock over its water dish or something like that so it always makes them feel more comfortable when they can grab onto something i've also found that these squeezy types of boas do better with a particulate substrate like a wood chips or um, you know, coconut husk, things like that, orchid bark. Um, they don't really do well on like newspaper or a really slick surface because they can't grab on. If you do use a paper substrate with these guys, I would recommend the corrugated cardboard because it has a really rough surface and that gives them a uh, surface to grip on and to feel more comfortable. But you know, if you take these steps uh, in your uh, squeezy boa's cage design, uh, the bow is going to feel a little more comfortable and a little safer and, you know, do better uh, psychologically. 
Now I'm going to show you guys some less squeezy boa constrictors. And don't get me wrong, these guys still squeeze. They just tend to be a little more confident when you take them out. And they're less likely to cut off the circulation in your hand. They just hold on gently. And probably my favorite animal to handle is this Bolivian boa. This is a boa constrictor amaralli. This is the orange crush bloodline. And these animals are just so cool because they're, they're definitely muscular. But they also have a more laid back personality than the true red tails. And you know, he's holding on, but my hand is very comfortable. You know, he's not squeezing the hell out of it. I can feel my fingers. He's not going to need, he doesn't feel the need to really grip and, you know, cut off the circulation. Just a really cool, chill, laid back animal. These guys also seem to be among the most intelligent of the boas. And, you know, when I open the cage, he looks up at me almost like he recognizes me as his owner. You know, it's really cool. Um, unfortunately, like a lot of really cool locality boas, these guys are really hard to find and there's not a huge number of people working with them. So if you want to get one and you see someone has a litter, be sure to grab one as soon as they go on sale because they typically don't last very long. And, you know, there's these cool uh, orange crush bloodlines. There's also the silverback form, which is kind of more of a grayish in color, but also very beautiful. But, you know, I, these Bolivian boas are just great as far as a really handleable, uh, interactive boa that really makes a great pet. Another really handleable, not too squeezy boa are Colombian boas. Colombian boa imperators, like this Barranquilla locality boa. And I've had these Branchia for about a year now, but they've quickly become some of my favorite boas. And they just have a lot of advantages. So as I mentioned, they're not nearly as squeezy as true red tails. Uh, you know, they don't need to cut off the circulation. They just kind of hold on gently. But they're also very beautiful. They have a very high contrast and lots of nice color. Even this nice reddish, orange, brownish tail. So although they're not true red tails, they do have a lot of the advantages of the true red tails and a lot of advantages over the true red tails in terms of handling them and just their general, um, you know, handleability and their pet qualities. And so I, this is a branchia boa, but there's a lot of non-locality specific Colombian boas. Your typical pet store, Colombian red tail or common boa is often uh, uh, largely of Colombian in origin. And as I mentioned before, I think a, a basic Colombian boa is the best first boa, the best beginner boa, and typically the best boa for about 90% of pet keepers. So uh, if you're looking for a nice, chill, handleable boa, I can't recommend a Colombian boa any stronger. The next type of less squeezy boa constrictor that I highly recommend is a form that's been in the captive pet trade in the United States for at least the last few decades. It's a very popular animal among locality collectors and that of course is the hog island boa from a small island off of the coast of Honduras, actually two small islands. But these animals have a lot of advantages, you know, one being that they're generally quite handleable. They don't really squeeze all that hard, although they do squeeze somewhat. No, so they're not gonna, they're gonna live up to the name of the boa constrictor. And also they have very beautiful colors, being a naturally occurring hypomelanistic, you know, very light colored boa, with lots of pinks and oranges, and even some subtle shades of blue and green in some specimens. Um, so these guys are semi-dwarfs, getting up to around five to six feet or so. Again, a lot of positive advantages of these guys. The only thing that is, you know, I found to be a disadvantage is that the babies can be tricky to get to eat of uh, on rodents. You know, so sometimes the babies won't eat on rodents from the beginning. Uh, it takes them a few months to get established. You know, sometimes I'll lose a few because they just don't eat after several months. So, you know, one thing to keep in mind, but overall they're great pet boa enjoyable to handle, and very beautiful to look at, and they definitely deserve their popularity among locality keepers. Another dwarf locality boa that tends to be less squeezy is the Terra Humara mountain boa from northern Mexico. And these are arguably the smallest of the boa constrictors, reaching adult sizes of as little as three and a half to four and a half feet. Uh, this is a four-year-old female who's approaching uh, maturity. You can see she's maybe three and a half to four feet long. But they have these beautiful colors as well. 
and they tend to be really chill animals. And they have a reputation for being a little bit hissy as babies. Most of the Mexican boas are a little hissy when they're babies, but they rarely if ever bite. They just do these like strikes that are just like bluffing. Um, it's kind of actually comical to watch. And the babies are so small anyway, even if they did bite you, they're not gonna do any damage. But typically when they get to be about six months to a year, they just become really mellow like this one. And you know, I don't really handle this one all that much. They're just naturally, they get mellow when they're adults. And they're just really chill. They probably move around less than other types of boas. So they're more likely to just hang out and just kind of chill. Um, I know people call ball pythons pet rocks because they have a behavior of just kind of sitting there. So I would say the tar humours, I mean, they're definitely more active than a ball python, but definitely one of the less active types of locality boas, just really chill. Uh, animals. If you want an animal you can take out and admire without it squeezing the hell out of your hand. A terra humara is probably a good choice for you. One more bow up for today's video and this is another type that tends to be less squeezy. The Argentine bow. And these as you probably know if you've watched my other videos are one of my favorite locality bows. I just love their dark colors and you know beautiful patterns. And these animals are one of the larger types of locality boas, you know, sometimes getting up to nine to 10 feet in length. But um, in general, they have kind of a longer body, you know, leaner muscle uh, as compared to a true red tail. The body tends to be a little rounder than a true red tail, a little less square, and just kind of leaner in general. So this animal is about six feet long. Um, she's still pretty muscular, don't get me wrong, but it's kind of a longer, leaner muscle compared to a true red tail. If I had a um, one of my Peruvians, true red tails at this, that's this size, this length, they're much larger and much girthier and much more massive looking versus the Argentine is a little leaner looking, a little more elongated, and in general, a little less squeezy. You can see she's holding on, but she's not really gonna tighten around. And you know, it's, it's something to keep in mind because you have to really support these animals. They're not uh, as squeezy. They're not gonna really wrap around your arm as much as a true red tail. So if you don't support them carefully, you might end up dropping them. But I just love these Argentine boas and because they're a little less squeezy than the true red tails, in general, they're a little easier to manage, you know, when I take them out and handle them. So another advantage for these guys. So I hope this video was helpful and gave you some insight into the different behaviors of different types of locality boas. And, you know, maybe you want to think about that when you're deciding what type of locality boa to add to your collection. As always, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to reach out to me via social media. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.